Um, welcome. Hi, everybody. Hi. Um, share my screen so we can get started. Hi, everybody. Okay. So um, it's already a little after the hour. So I have on the screen the antitrust policy. Um, so please read that over. There's also a link to the code of conduct, uh, which is if you're curious on how to act um, and behave properly, that'll give you some guidelines. I'm sure everybody here knows how to act and behave properly. <laughs> um, so just take a moment to read that over. And then I wanted to take a moment to congratulate Arunaman uh, for being the mentee. She is going to be the project manager for all of the individual um, committees we have um, and you know, support everyone with meeting times and whatever else they need, uh, and me especially. Um, hopefully she will uh, learn um, and become a great leader from this um, and we'll see. So if you wanna say a few words, Arunaman, now's your chance. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, sure. So thank you so much, Bobby, for giving me this opportunity. And I'm very excited. This is something new. And I'm I'm really glad that I will be able to help so many people and contribute in some way to the community and hope I will help everyone contribute more to Hyperledger and make some meaningful contributions. And really excited that I will be managing so many things. And I hope I will learn a lot from this journey and also help others. Thank you yeah, so much. Yes, yeah, thank you for coming on board. It's going to be a, a, a fun ride. You learn a lot. Yeah, yeah, sure. So before we get into the introductions, because I want the introductions to have a purpose today, um, I just wanted to go over just a few things. So I went over some of the pages that were here. Um, and there's a lot of great information. So when you're introducing yourself and if you put anything in here, um, please uh, take time and tell me to click on your page and we'll go over what you have. I know Arunaman, you put in there that um, you're gonna teach us about that one course, but I think that that needs to go a few weeks down the road only because of the urgency of some of the other announcements. Yeah, 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 sure. Also, it will take a bit time, so I think it's better we keep it for the later meetings. Yes, Might yes. 10 to 15 minutes of the time, so it's better that we do the more important stuff now. Yeah, because we have that deliverable this week, which we'll get into in a second. Yeah, um, yeah. What I was thinking of doing again, so last week we discussed attaching people to projects, and I see through some of the pages, people actually went in the community and listened to calls and got information, which... You know, if your turn to talk, please mention that and, and discuss that and we'll update um, the committees and stuff. So here's where we're headed. So if you're interested in sharing a committee um, to break this out um, and, and to keep a runeman from going crazy this summer, uh, we're going to um, form this into um, as if she is the chair and there are subcommittees and each subcommittee will have a chair. So if you step up for that responsibility, you'll be able to put, I was a chair of the task force um, in Hyperledger on your resume and you can talk about it. You can set up a meetup and talk about your experience and people will come because people are very curious. So this is a great way to get exposure in the community as well as something to advance your career if you want a leadership role. So again, we're gonna have, um, subcommittees for the different uh, buckets that we've been talking about. Also, I think we need another committee, which is something we can discuss for developing the personas and, and kind of working um, on that, um, which I, that, that's not really clear in my head what that looks like yet, but I think that there's gonna be some kind of need for that, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so if while we're making the introductions, if you want to step up and share one of these, and I know someone's been working in the GitHub repository with Tracy, I've seen the emails going by, and I'm not sure if there's a lot of people doing that or just one, because I really, I've been bogged down with other works to, to go through the threads. But if that was you, please, please present what you've been doing with Tracy. Um, again, if you have any of these areas, I've seen some people were working on what should be in templates, what should be in here, what should be there. That's great. Step up to it. And if you don't want to share it, just put yourself in for now as a committee member, because that's what you want to be working on. 
because it will be so much easier if uh, when we do these meetings, if we can just overall report um, and then have each committee report on to what, what they're up to. So other than that, and then we do have a presentation coming up. So uh, the way the presentation is, is it is for the mentorship program. <clears throat> We're only gonna get a chance to do one or two slides, but if you are a person who is attached to a project at this point, meaning that you've gone to a meeting for say BASU, um, and you can go to the mentorship tab that you, uh, the portal that, and everybody who's still on these calls and wants to step up and has a leadership role will be in that ambassador program that Min was talking about last week. So I'm going to run that section too, so that it'll be official and stuff. But you can go see um, all of the uh, programs that have been accepted somewhere, somehow. Um, for Hyperledger. So if you're in Besu and you decide to step, you know, want to do something for this this project, you should, you know, be a little familiar with. Oh, we'd have to do it for Hyperledger, but you can search it out and take, get the idea. Um, so, say, so for instance, you were the Besu and we go through. Oh, I think I have it on my page here. We see who needs support in the um, mentorship program. Here it is. So if you see a uh, bevel and you were in a bevel or you see Besu here, or you see, you know, just the onboarding mentee task force, all these, you know, there's, they're going to be a mentee at that uh, meeting on Wednesday from onboarding that may not know, you know, how much help we're going to offer them. Um, so again, if you've gone to any of these meetings, uh, maybe you want to say something on a slide. Uh, so we're going to have going back to our slides. We're going to have um, two slides at the mentorship thing. Um, one will be an introduction to the documentation task force, which Aruniman will do. She'll say, we are the documentation task force. Um, I am here to support. I'll be a contact person for anyone um, in the mentorship program who needs help with documentation. We've seen a lot of projects that have asked for documentation or have a documentation piece. Um, and then the next slide will be um, our assistant saying that, well, you know, maybe someone else want to step up and do that slide and say, you know, we're here to offer templates. We're here to offer you, you know, show you how to set up your GitHub repository. And if anyone wants to step up for that slide and give information to the mentees and a contact, again, when we do the introductions in a minute, please step up. Uh, Bobby, so, can you please uh, repeat that part of the onboarding task force? What you just uh, said just now, uh, yeah, about introduction to document standards, talk sports, what do you say about that? Um, okay, so I have, again, been really super busy, so I haven't checked in with the docu uh, onboarding task force. Is that what you were talking about? Uh, I was just asking you to repeat what you said just now because my internet just went off. So oh, I okay. I was, okay. Um, so I was talking about the presentation that we have for Wednesday how okay. um, I believe the first slide would be from you. And again, um, I asked you, I gave you a heads up that you have to create this little two slide program. So it should look like a hyperledger slide because you know, you're know you just gonna either send them to Min in advance or share your screen um, during the um, Wednesday presentation to all the mentees, um, okay. which everybody is, everybody is invited to. You don't have to be a, a paid mentee to go to this. It's great to understand the program because again, you're in that other section of the program, you get all the benefits the mentees get um from that secondary level program um i don't want to call it secondary from that down whatever we'll figure it out anyway so we're going to do a two slide presentation one is going to be introducing what we're doing for the community so you're going to do that arun uh, arunaman like maybe say we're working on github repositories if you're writing a white paper we have templates coming out um if you're on the best practices or if you need to know how to get your project through best practices, this is the tap, you know, this is the subcommittee you want to reach out to. Or if you have user guide needs, you know, you want to reach out to this subcommittee. Um, and onboarding is the same. So again, I haven't been in touch with John Carpenter, so I don't know who his mentee is or why they haven't been showing up at this meeting, but I'm going to figure that out this week. Okay, so I will just give an introduction of how the structure is going to be like there will be 
a chair and there will be subcommittees and if any of the uh, projects have any needs then they can reach out to the subcommittee uh, yes except for okay. except for i don't think we need to go into our task force structure just say you know here here because we're going to kind of keep it real simple for them because they they've got enough on their plate they're getting a lot of information from this one meeting so we're there just to kind of say we're the documentation task force if you don't introduce the committees or whatever just say if you have any needs we're here because that's what we're working on this summer and then the next slide would be for the people who are um, when we do the introductions might want to step up and speak, you know, the more people who, you know, we have one slide, we could have three people speaking on that one slide just to get an introduction and get you used to doing a presentation. So okay. I'll let you, yeah, so you're going to go, you're going to do, and we'll, again, we'll make a, um, I can do that right now. Can't I? Yes, I can. Where are we? Documentation task force. Should go there. Again, I always apologize for how slow my computer is. So we're going to put the information for the next two days for the mentorship presentation. Patient here, that should be capitalized. Okay. I spelled mentorship wrong. No, I didn't. Okay, so the first slide is going to be. Oh, I spelled it wrong. That's fine. Okay, so we'll get back to this in a minute when we have more information. So again, um, this page is where we'll keep the presentation of people, the two slides that we're going to do while we work on it, get the people's names. Um, <clears throat> but in the meantime, let's go through the introductions and see if anybody wants to step up to speak on that second slide. So again, the first slide, I think I did write it down somewhere. Two slide presentation. Um, this presentation will be shared with other mentees during the program Wednesday. Here are the details. So slide one for us will be a title slide of the Documentation Standard Task Force um, Enhancing Mentorship uh, Project Quality. So that's what we're here to do is we're here to like, this is what you'll say. We're here to support you and all your needs and all your documentation. And two um, would be the purpose where we have like the different subcommittees or whoever wants to say, you know, I'm here, I can help with this, I can help with, you know, whatever. If you um, have any ideas for that, you know, again, just presenting doesn't mean that you, you're committed for life or that you have to do anything. It's just trying to give these mentees a, a parachute to land on when they're looking for documentation and get some names and contacts and connections going so that they know who to reach out to. Um, okay, so without further ado, uh, let's start with introductions. And I'm just gonna have Arunaman go next um, just because she is alphabetically in the top and she is the new mentee, so. Yeah, sure, thank you, Bobby. So hello, everyone. And my name is Anima Chaudhary, and uh, this summer I will I will be uh, interning with Hal Palacha as the LFX mentee, and will be managing all the uh, all the committees. And I'm really excited for this. Uh, recently, I also completed the the uh, technical documentation course by Google, which maybe in a few weeks I will be sharing whatever I learned with everyone. And yeah, that's about me. And hope this uh, throughout the summer we will all make some good contributions and and make this project a success. So thank you so much, Bobby. No, thank you. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to that. I saw on your page that you had written a little bit about it. So that was... Uh, yeah, I just I uploaded the presentation on that page. 
Oh, yeah, I saw that too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to keep it there, that's why I said I just thought it'd be easier for the group if it was in a like a mutual easy spot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me just do this. And then I think Agnes is next. Hi, everyone. My name is Agnes. Um, this, this is the first time I'll be doing uh, this big of a project. So I'm looking forward to lots of learning. Yeah, so I attended some of the calls last week. I, I think I had written a summary, uh, but the gist of it was I attended the, the Indy, Aries, and Bezu calls. Uh, for the indie team, they felt like there wasn't enough contributions, so they were looking uh, to try and help people contribute by maybe revamping the documentation. Uh, the Aries team uh, was not very clear on what they want yet, and the Bezu team had already some things they were they wanted to work on documentation-wise, but they wanted the uh, engineers to take the lead. So they said they'd communicate further on what kind of help they'd be looking for. So I think, yeah, I also uh, just got some, shared some links to some Linux Foundation courses that maybe one might want to look at, especially if you're doing this for the first time. Yeah, so I hope to learn and contribute lots more. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. I am. Um... Did you put those links in the chat? They are on the on the page on my page. Oh, your page. Okay, I see your page. Sorry, your page for some reason was not alphabetical. Everybody else is alphabetical oh, yeah. at the bottom. I'll have to move you up when I get a chance. So, um, just for anyone who's interested in those links. Oh, I wrote this course. I just finished writing this course. It's going to be published today or tomorrow. And I'm, I've never taken these. So I'm so interested in learning about these. Um, but thank you for doing that. That's awesome. So uh, let's see who's next on the call for an introduction. Um, Daniel. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Daniel. And um, um, it's a pleasure to be part of this program, irrespective. Um, let me use the opportunity to say congratulations to our Runima. And um, I think um, I'll be active in this task force and um, we'll see how we can work together to uh, make some impact. So uh, as regards what last week, uh, we we're given some tasks. I think I was able to join two, um, two of the should I say tax loss or the programs respectively? I think one of them, I think um, the last speaker already mentioned what they required. I think that's BESU. I joined BESU too, but I think let me speak to the other one, uh, which is the Carbon Accounting Climate SIG. I was part of the meeting on Tuesday, precisely last week. And um, yeah, they needed some documentation help and basically actually with uh one they need a documentation on something they call ontology and taxonomy so um hopefully i'll be able to work with them going forward and be able to help them yeah i think i saw that on your page too um let's go see yes yes i'll update that on my page Yeah, right there. They, that is a great group um, and they could use all the help that they could get. Um, so anyone who's interested in helping them because they're one of the only, in my opinion, um, special interest groups that have an overall appeal to the entire globe. Um, like whereas you have trade finance or telecom, that's only interesting to the people who are in telecom or trade finance. Whereas everybody breathes. So this is a really um, vital uh, effort. And if they do great work, but can't communicate it, it's not great work. So if we can help them do that, that would be fabulous. And I want to see if I can find something real quick. I had started years ago trying to help them <clears throat> uh, with some external presentations. 
and meetups to get people um, interested in um, their task force. And I had a, uh, I got an NFT. <laughs> I shouldn't be doing this, but <laughs> that represented to me uh, their efforts. Um, oh, here it is. And I'll share it with you. So if anybody wants to do documentation and they need a logo for uh, their efforts, they can use this one. I will lease it to you. Isn't that adorable? Anyway. So back to the real world. <laughs> Sorry about that. I often go off on tangents. Um, so thank you, Daniel, for presenting that. And if um, when we're working on the presentation, if you want to, um, you know, say that you're there for um, any assistance uh, to the special interest groups, if anyone, um, if the special interest groups, and I think there are some uh, projects in the labs from the special interest groups, that would be awesome. Um, okay, let's get back. I hope I keep getting back to the one that I'm editing. There it is. Okay. Um, so thank you. And um, Gianluca. Okay. Uh, so um, I am interested in uh, hyperledger fabric and uh, in um, IROA because I have um, um, skills in uh, develop software development, uh, also in C++ because uh, last time um, you told that uh, uh, C++ is needed for IROA uh, project. I also feel, feel some, something about uh, your um, last request um, uh, in page. If you scroll down, you see uh, the, the table. In the table, I added my uh, interest in the last, um, the, the, the second row. Wait, am I missing this table? Uh, I think no. Uh, the the first table you you see scrolling. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, this one. That one. Yeah, that one. I added my interested, and also uh, I uh, brought something about the um, uh, interest. Uh, so I, I got in GitHub and uh, template uh, uh, contribution. Well, thank you. Yeah, I'm looking at, um, again, I'm trying to do two things at one time here with this uh, computer. So just bear with me for a second. Uh, yeah, I'm on your page. It says you're interested in the Aroha projects. Um, I just want to scroll down to see if they have any in the mentorship that I was aware of um, that you could offer assistance to. No, that's surprising. They might. I think that, um, we should be better off. This might not be a comprehensive list, but that mm -hmm. if we go to um, the mentorship main page, um, okay. You might see if there's any, because I really think that they they are having, there's an Aroha project. Um, but again, there might not be this mentorship program, but they still need, might need documentation needs. Um, so interesting. Okay. Anyway, okay, so thank you very much for that. And we were definitely going to uh, tap into your resources. Um, oh, okay, I, I, I will update my, my page. Okay, okay. update also my page. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's key because that's a. Um, I feel Aroha, it's been in the community since I have, which is like six or seven years, and it really mm. never shines or gets gets the coverage it needs. And maybe that is because the documentation isn't easy to read, or I don't know. We'll we'll have to figure that out as we go. Um, so thank oh. you for. That. Okay, uh, just a question. Could could I uh, uh, could. Um, I will join to um, our uh, meeting if uh, needed, and I uh, uh, will update um, about the requests. Perfect. Yeah, we're gonna um, at the end of the call. Anyone who's interested in presenting is gonna stay on for a few minutes so that we can just get the slides, and we'll probably meet one more time, either mm -hmm. tomorrow or um, right before the meeting. 
um, to send over the slides to Min. We should have them toured the night before. So if we could meet sometime tomorrow for anyone who's interested, uh, we can meet the same time tomorrow, I guess. Um, uh, okay. Bobby, uh, sorry to interrupt. I had two questions. Can I ask it right now? Of course. Yeah, so I just wanted to know that what is your preferred way of communication? Like if I have any doubts, then how can reach, I reach out to you like through email or LinkedIn? That's a really good question for me. The best way is probably through a LinkedIn message because get, I get a notice on my phone, whereas my okay. email just keeps piling up and piling up and I usually check it all at once. Um, okay, so sure. that will connect me. Um, but again, I'd like this group to communicate whatever the group conscious decides, whether it's Discord, WeChat, whatever is out there for us that makes it easier. I like to just use the wiki pages, um, not for instant communication, but to put work down, because if you put it in a Discord or whatever, you got to scroll and try to find it here. It's right where it should be. Um, so, again, communicate your work on Discord. And, and we still have to talk about the Trello board. I think we're going a little bit too um, far. Uh, we might be taking on more on the Trello board unless somebody else wants to, to, to run that than it's worth, but we'll get to that. That's a topic in our um, <laughs> communication. Okay, sure. Yeah, and I had another question in one of the emails that I received was, uh, it contained a calendar invite for the mentees but the invite is not working. So how can I ask, whom should I reach out to send another invite? Let me just see something here for a second. You might not need one. Uh, I'm going right now. I'll show you everybody what I'm doing when, for that, how to answer that question. So what I'm doing is I opened another window. I'm going to the calendar of public meetings and see if it's in there since it's a big enough meeting and a lot of people are coming. It most likely is in the meeting list. Um, again, my computer will take forever. So the meeting is Wednesday. Okay, so I, 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 it's not I, here. okay, so I, I, I can see this page, uh, but uh, also like I received an email uh, and the email had a uh, title as calendar events for maintenance to 2023 at the red lists uh, lists and uh, it had a message called hello attached to the calendar invites for all the upcoming events in this group and uh, but uh, it the invite.ics file when I'm trying to download it it's showing me that it is corrupted so how whom should I reach out to send me a uh, uh, another version of the file so that I can add it to it would my... be me okay okay sure. I want to see, though, I think I got, because as a mentor, I got the same, we have to go to the same meeting, so I got the same email. So let me see if my link is corrupt. Yeah. But I'll, that's going to take a while. I'm not going to take up too much time um, on that. Okay, no still, problem. Yeah. Uh, introductions to go through and, and trying to get people to sign up for the the task yeah, yeah yeah sure yeah sure okay this is i will reach one. out to me regarding that that would be great i think i really have too many of these open now yeah that's the one i want okay so next on our list is sorry, Bobby, I have a, I, sorry oh, I have a question sorry for the for the, for the interruption the recorded video there is, is there a, a page uh, where um, you load uh, recorded video after our meeting? Um, it's right on this documentation homepage and I don't load it. That's done through Hyperledger corporate or whatever or foundation. So this meeting is automatically recorded because it's on their Zoom and then they post mm -hmm. it to whoever the, the page that it is on. So right after our meeting notes, he comes back and he posts okay. the meeting recordings. So they're just, okay. each one has somewhere down there recording. Okay. Is there a, a page where uh, automatically is loaded? No. No, no, that's that's okay. something that no the Hyperledger Foundation has those dashboards for, not us. Okay, no, no problem, no problem, thank you. Okay, but they're, yeah, they should be within like a day put on our page. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, Joe. Uh, I'm audible. 
Yes. Okay. Uh, so I talked to uh, the maintainer of a uh, bevel project, and they do have uh, like a uh, documentation mentorship program already. So I don't think so. They need any documentation help from our side. Oh uh, yes, they do. Yes. Well, that's uh, that's that's the whole purpose of the task force, and I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, they they're they're saying we're going to develop our own documentation, but Hyperledger yes. Foundation wants them to use the tools available to them, and so we need to. Uh, inform them of what tools are available because they probably don't know okay so like we have to only help them uh in developing their uh, uh documentation or we have to contribute like i have a doubt so i'm confused so they they said to you when you went to the meeting that they're okay with documentation because that's what the mentee is doing Yes, uh, they have already a, a mentorship project. Uh, uh, they will redesign a uh, documentation. So they are working on that only. Oh, okay. That's perfect. Yes. Well, then one of the things, if you would like to present um, on Wednesday, um, on that second slide, you can, you know, come in and say, and for uh, Bevel, I went to the Bevel meeting and I know that you have a documentation mentee, but we invite he or her to come to our call to see what we offer. Okay. Because that might help. And then that way you'll be the liaison between the Bevel people and us um, because their documentation needs should be in line with what this task force is putting out. Okay. Okay, sure. Uh, thank you for going to that meeting. Thank you. Did you enjoy it? Do you like Bevel? Uh, yes, actually, like, I'm a very new to a uh, blockchain and Python. So, like, I really enjoyed it. And also, I uh, saw that the documentation, like, they've already worked on the documentation thing. And that is very organized. So, like, I oh, wanted maybe you to... Bring best practices back to us. Yes. Like I wanted to contribute uh, in the documentation. So I just uh, texted them. Excellent. Thank you. And again, that's a great project to attach to because it just it just got out of labs and it's just getting started. So that's that's awesome. Um, so, okay. So so then next, and thank you very much for the, for the work. Um, Malcolm. Hey, hello everyone. Um, my name is Malcolm Connor. Um, a little bit about me, just uh, you know, in, in the past, I've worked on uh, some personal projects, including uh, web development projects. Um, I've done some Python programming, and also I've got into uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence. Um, and then also did some work with some computer networking uh, with uh, Linux operating systems uh, and doing a little bit of uh, cybersecurity work as well. Um, I currently work in uh, data science. So I work for a data governance team uh, for a health insurance company. And I basically write scripts using Python and SQL to help organize data for programmers in the company. Um, as far as blockchain goes, uh, I've done a couple of Ethereum testnet deployments on Polygon. Um, also completed uh, a couple of Hyperledger courses on LinkedIn Learning. Um, now I'm currently working on the uh, edX course, which I believe Bobby is, uh, uh, you know, has uh, put together. Um, so I'm, I'm almost done with that. And my goal for this program is to contribute. Uh, to the development of enterprise blockchain technology and, and really push that forward because something I really believe in. Um, so I'm excited to gain experience in building blockchain systems for companies. And then also, I want to also gain experience in contributing to open source projects. Um, so uh, one thing I'm interested in um, in this program is I think creating user guides might be um, a good fit for me. I don't have any real experience with it, but I did add um, a template on my um, on my uh, 
uh, what do you call it, uh, page. So um, yeah, we wanted to check that out. I basically just kind of went around looking at a bunch of user guides and taking the little bit that I did know about Hyperledger. Um, I put together a table of contents and then just kind of a description for each category for the user guide. I'm trying to get it up. Hold on just a second, Malcolm. Let's... Oh yeah, you're fine. Here we go. Oh, that's incredible. Yeah, so it's just, and it's like, I, I, I was totally open for any critiques because this is not something that I've done before, but um, I did look at some examples and kind of just put down what I thought would be relevant for Hyperledger projects. And this is the the goal is for this to be for any project under the Hyperledger umbrella can use this user guide. So definitely open to critiques. So this is so uh, let me get this straight. So this user guide that that you've put together is kind of like a white label for Hyperledger people without dealing with a project. Basically, yes. Yeah. Cool. So like any, yeah, any any project can use this as a template and say, okay, here's the introduction, here's the, the system requirements for the installation and blah, blah, blah. You know, you might have to run this next to the best practices suggestions for these things and see if there's anything um synergies or any discrepancies okay sure um I and i that. think there's a link for that on our page somewhere i dropped it in so they're almost done with their uh best practices <clears throat> i didn't um and i think these are our templates best practice there it is that might be it ah uh, okay do they have a meeting coming up anytime soon um they do i'm not sure when it is but they report to the toc let's see okay uh, multiple pass what is this this is not what i wanted Yeah, this might get you. Um, I think this is what I wanted. Yeah, I would just go through this GitHub repository because that's what they've been working on for the past several months to get this. And I think that the TOCs were ready to approve it. Um, so everything that they want in so far as uh, that information would be in that document. So it's the best practices um, in the GitHub repository under the TOC. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that would be awesome. Cool. Under you says under the TLC. Okay. Yeah, you go and inside. Link, I'm sure TLC. the link is. Yeah, it, even from the wiki page, if you just drop this down, you can get right to the Hyperledger GitHub, and it's your TOC is the first thing in the README. Click it, and then you'll see our task forces. Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. That's great. Um, Thank you. I spell practices wrong. Okay, so that's good. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, so next we have Sahil. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, Sahil Prasad, this side. So basically, I wanted to join about, uh, wanted to understand more about Hyperledger. So contributing in it, uh, in using documentation would be very uh, useful for me. So I understand that Hyperledger is making enterprise level tools for in the blockchain technology and helping uh, blockchain use uh, use case of blockchain worldwide. So so this is my way of contributing and uh, understanding about what Hyperledger is doing by, by the use of contributing in its documentation would be helpful for me as well. So yeah, if you uh, yeah, if you open that uh, my page for I, I was I have written something so my ideas would are straight that uh, any enterprise tools needs to needs to be scalable so that more and more people use it right so uh, if select a project is using Python and 
documentation for that documentation uh, we need sphinx actually sphinx is a framework or a tool which makes uh, which understands the python projects or python code itself and makes sense of makes sense of it by just by using uh, makes sense of it and documents it uh, in english language okay so using sphinx sphinx i i can maybe i can uh, pronounce it i am not pronouncing it well but it's s p h i n no it's sphinx yeah that's correct correct yeah so so yeah using uh, sphinx with python is effective and well and always well structured a uh, table that includes relevant links is important so what i was thinking here it was if if a user was going through a project he he might be lost because of uh, different terms used in that project so that link should be always available with the user or uh, the one who is going through that project right so again uh, f- uh, feedback for the documentation uh, feedback is important because if let's say a user is going through it and a user does not ex- understand a particular line or a particular uh, thing that he wants to he or she wants to install so uh, it's easier for the ones who has made the documentation to figure it out like uh, so that they make further changes properly so yeah that do, those are my ideas and uh i i would love to contribute and help arunima uh in the this summer and also so so the the way you're approaching this which is awesome is you're coming in from a developer's perspective so i've gone to college and i know python i've gone to school and i know c++ now i'm looking at hyperledger where do i go is that kind of sum it up Mhm that's right that's right Bobby. perfect that's awesome so that that would be the personas which let me just see if i can jump on real quick this other page yeah here we go so this was uh oh, so it's back here so i don't know if you can see this clearly yeah yeah it's visible um but this is what the hyperledger foundation director sent or marketing director sent me as the personas they're working on so you would focus on this the developer community ah, sorry the developer community um and i never real i never it, it opened up my eyes because i always i never realized that they'd each be coming in from a different speciality like a different programming language that just never dawned on me because i just thought they'd be coming in and you know know everything mm-hmm. uh, so that's very interesting thank you for that um well done awesome so, yeah. so, i am also ahead. like daniel is interested in sigs i am also interested in sigs making uh different documentation for special interest groups perfect mm-hmm. so that would be awesome so yeah and, if arunima is looking for any help or some sort of uh, making assistance or something i am i am available this summer yeah. perfect well hopefully you'll be the one on one of the um committee chairs that would be great yes yeah and thank you so much for being so helpful and i'm sure you will make some really impactful and great contributions this summer i really like your enthusiasm and yeah all the best this is thank you very much let's get thank in you. touch if uh, i need to ask any questions how can i ask you I'm uh, sure you can ask me a message you can send me a message on linkedin i am always taking my linkedin messages or you can send me an email i also regularly check my emails okay i am dropping my mail and linkedin on uh, on the chat so that if any of you need any help you can just ask yeah. me and i will try my best to help you yeah sure. that will be great yeah so uh, bobby i wanted to ask that uh, are there any other open position for mentees Um the menti program is closed what we're doing um again Arunaman um is going to be the one who leads this but there is this academic program which they just opened which yeah, is yeah. 
Angeles. for the other mentees and uh, we're going to have definitely a, a big uh, presence there. Okay. So you would be there. And then again, you'd get exposure to um, the TOC doing presentations there at a lot of meetups. And again, the global forum in the fall um, mm -hmm. is a huge, they're always looking for uh, presenters and people to run workshops. So that would be, you know, great if you could help out with that too. Yes, yes. yes. Thank you, thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. And now we're gonna go to Victoria. Hello. Hi, Bobby. Hello. Hello. How are you? Nice speaking with you again. Oh, congrats to Arunima. I hope I got that right. Okay, so um, from the last meeting, um, we are asked to go through the different projects and select one we'd be interested in um, contributing documentations to. So I'm still trying to, um, you know, um, understand what Hyperledger is doing. So um, and um, let's let's say I'm new to blockchain. So I I sent a LinkedIn message to you, Bobby. I was asking for the um, document you shared with us um, on the last meeting, like when you're trying to um, give us overview of the different projects. Yeah, so uh, I was looking for pro a project that is um, close to, because I'm a software developer, so I'm looking for a project that is close to um, the language um, 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 let's say I'm familiar with. So I'm, I'm you know, doing JavaScript now and JavaScript frameworks. So I was like really finding it difficult to choose projects. So I used, um, I signed up for an EDS course, Introduction to Blockchain and then Hyperledger. I know I signed up for one course and I've been taking the courses, but I, I finally um, um, and chose Cacti, Caliper and Firefly. So I was still trying to um, uh, narrow it down to just one choice. So I finally came up with Firefly, but before I could <laughs> make my decision, um, yeah, so I will join their meeting on Wednesday. Tell Nico I sent you. <laughs> <laughs> so again, Firefly holds a special place in my heart because they were so helpful when we were doing the giving chain, one of the iterations of the giving chain. They gave up so much time and we'd ask for something and they would code it for us as we were asking for it. it they are amazing people and they would, lo uh, would love any help. So good job. Wait, what did I just do here? Sorry. There we go. Okay. And a lordership rule. There we go. Um, so everybody, thank you for that. Um, to just answer your question, Victoria, where um, I got that information from is that new course. It's the free course from edX. It is Hyperledger 171. Um, and I did say um, I would go over the tools pretty quickly if we could today. Um, and then if anyone wants to stay on, I know Arunaman and I are gonna stay on to just work on that one slide for Wednesday. Um, and then we'll meet again tomorrow, same time. Um, let me see if I can use the same link. I'll let you know in a minute. Um, let me see here. So we can always meet on Discord if, or I have a Zoom link, but it's so much easier just to use the Hyperledger ones. Um, so let's see if anybody is using our link tomorrow at this time. So this was on. So it looks like nobody has a call tomorrow at 9 a.m. Um, so just go here and use this link and we'll meet in the same spot, same time tomorrow for the presentation finals uh, to get the final touches on the presentation. But as I said, I went over the DLTs in that course. Um, so let me now go over the tools real quick for everyone. Let me see if I can open that chapter. Chapter five. Every time I do this, my Zoom bar gets in the way of the button I need to select. So I'm constantly moving that tab. Okay. 
Here we go. Wait a minute. Okay, give me just a second. I apologize for the delay. There it is, sorry. <laughs> okay, so we went over last time the DLTs, which are all the blockchains and how they each specialize in different things. Now, oh, this is the wrong chapter. The wrong chapter, hold on just a second. Here we go. This is the right chapter now, and we'll just go over this very quickly. So again, we have um, a lot of projects in the labs. I think there's 30 projects in the labs, and a lot of them don't come out as enormous um, <clears throat> DLT projects. We basically have the five. A lot of them come out as um, tools and libraries to help those DLTs. So we have the first. Um, tool that we'll talk about real quick, or library. Um, there's two libraries in the tech stack. They come into that data um, level. Uh, so it's Aries and Anon Creds, um, which used to be the Ursa piece, um, I believe. So Aries is the wallet that lets you do the token chain, the token exchanges. Um, it's written in Python, JavaScript. Um, here is the breakdown Go um, of the code base languages that Aerie is written. It's contributed mostly by um, IBM, Evernim, and the British Columbia. It is the backbone of the IEEE identity solution. They are completely compatible with all of the uh, trust triangle information and the um, information that comes from them. Um, it works with the, that, again, that concept of decentralized identifiers where you own your own assertions and you can supply your college degree, proof of residency, proof of age, um, and only that to the people who need it, as opposed to what we do now, giving out every piece of our data to everyone who asks. Um, again, so that's Aries. It has a lot to do with the verifiable credentials. Um, it has to do with that... Um, uh, indie blockchain, because uh, it works with the indie blockchain. And again, it, what let that more talks, talks about the Sovereign Foundation and how they view the Aries uh, wallet and the protocols that go with Aries. The next library is um, Anon Creds. Um, and again, that was the anonymous, anonymous credentials piece. Um, and they're working on the zero knowledge proofs a lot in that. So again, this is anonymously verifying things without having to uh, give away all your information. And this is written mostly in Rust. Um, and there's contributors. Again, the design is that trust triangle where uh, the issuer can issue a, a assertion or a claim. The owner keeps it in their Aries wallet. Um, and when a verifier needs to verify something from that owner, the issuer no longer needs to get involved because they wrote it on a credential that is verifiable. Um, and that is the Anon Creds library. And then we get into some of these tools. Now, these tools are hard to pick on a level in the tech stack only because they kind of go through the level stage. They reach more than one. Um, and the first one is Bevel. And I know someone on the call was on the Bevel call. Um, if you have any comments, please interrupt me and jump in. Um, these are the code base languages, the contributors. Um, and what Bevel is, it was the blockchain automate, automation framework um, in the uh, labs for a while. And then when it came out of labs, they wanted it to have a hyperledger name. So they named it Bevel. Um, and now what... <clears throat> 
Bevel does is it's almost a template for you to set up your blockchain network, like what you need, what frameworks you need to get that job done. Um, as anybody here who has taken any of the fabric courses or the um, administrator or developer fabric courses, you know that setting up your system is harder than the course. Um, so these products make try to make that easier for proof of concepts and um, education so that you can um, educate people on how to set up Hyperledger Fabric and not really teach them about Docker and, and, and getting your system and your virtual machine. Um, so that stuff is already taken care of by this blockchain automation framework. The next tool is... And again, this is a free course on edX. You can take it at any time. Um, Cactus, which came out of the last um, Hyperledger convention I went to in or Global Forum in 2020, right before COVID hit. Um, and it was because we were in Arizona that they decided to name it Cactus. And now it's Cacti because they realized it was incorrect as Cactus. Um, do I have... Uh, yeah, and this is written in TypeScript, Croyton, Go, Rust. I mean, it's all in there. What it trains to do is to level the playing field to make blockchains interoperable. So it takes some of your key pieces of a blockchain and put them in a playground that other people can join, other blockchains can play in. So it kind of makes a playground to talk to other blockchains. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, it probably doesn't do it justice, but if you go in and, and the... Peter is the head of this and he is always willing to teach and talk. So if you're interested in cactus, um, here's kind of where they, they, you go into the cactus node, all the other clients, base who can come in, fabric can come in. And I believe there's other, um, other third party uh, blockchains that cactus talks to as well. Caliper, this is to try to figure out, again, in a le level playing field, how well your blockchain is performing. It is not a competitive tool. It's not to compare Ethereum to Bitcoin or Ethereum to Hyperledger or whatever. It is just to see benchmarks for your blockchain to see if you're meeting them. So you're kind of just testing the efficacy of your chain. Um, transaction speeds, that kind of information. This is written in JavaScript and Go. Um, again, it is a benchmarking uh, tool. The next tool we have in our little landscape is Cello. And Cello helps manage, create, and terminate blockchains. So if you're running a corporation and you have several blockchains running with several things going on, Cello will give you a dashboard. This is where the people who do software and uh, interface design. Um, this is definitely one of the things you should look at because uh, Cello uh, definitely tries to give you desktops. They're always looking to improve them for you to manage your blockchains. And then we have, let's keep going. Cello deep dive. Okay, Firefly. Again, my personal favorite. Uh, which is blockchain as a service. It lets you get a blockchain up and running the best possible configurations. It is very pluggable, um, super nodes. They offer nodes for you to run on. Um, so they lease nodes to you so you can get your system. That's how the giving chain was up and running. We use their nodes. So it was easy to get um, up and managing a blockchain. Um, it is written primarily in Go. It is one of the newer ones. It was uh, given to us by Kaleido, and they're very, very much involved in education of this project. One of the reasons why it's one of the most successful Hyperledger tools of even over the blockchains as well is because of the way they document and communicate their project. Um, they're doing such a good job of that. Um, again, Firefly offers dashboards to check your workflow. Um, it's a great, great product. Um, and then Solang, I know another person, I'm not sure if they're on the call, went to the Solang call. Um, and again, that is a compiler for Solidity um, so that you can leverage smart contracts from other vetted uh, third parties and use them um, in Hyperledger. Um, so this is the Rust language it's written in and key components, and that's about it. 
So that was our little quick brief introduction on the, uh, okay, you can, uh, of the uh, tools. So last week we did the projects, now we did the tools. So if anybody saw any of those tools that really, really interest you, please start going to the meetings. They're on that public calendar. They're open to everyone. Again, I'm, I'm so appreciative of the fact that some of you guys have gone out and done that. Um, so before we go right into working on the presentation, does anybody have any, again, this week we're really concerned more uh, on anything else than getting the presentation to the mentees out there so that they know that we're a hand that they can, you know, call up and shake and say, I need help with this. I want to look like Hyperledger. I don't want to have to go back and do the documentation again because I missed something. You know, we want to be there to help them with that. Um, so does anybody have any questions? I'm going to look in the chat. Uh, yes. Uh, about um, the Wednesday uh, meeting, um, is there already um, a link, a Zoom link or not? For the mentorship meeting? Y yes, on Wednesday. Yes, yeah. hold on. I'm going to try to get you. That's the link that um, Arunaman said wasn't really working for her. Let me see if I have a different one. Okay. No, you know what? I'm just going to reach out to Min after this call and have her put it on the calendar of public meetings. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Thank so you. it will be. It should be there anyway. I'm not. I'm really confused as to why it's not there. Ah, uh, no problem. Okay. It, uh, I'll make sure that it gets on there. That will be my to do today is to get that to Min. Let me just okay, so I I got okay. the I got the from Min. I got that uh, calendar invite for the mentorship onboarding that is taking place on 14th. But apart from that, I also got a meal having the calendar invites for mentees. I don't know for what it was, but uh, I think all the mentees got it. I asked Akanksha on LinkedIn. She also got that and the link was not working for her as well. So Okay, I will definitely reach out to Min and let her know that. Yeah. Um, and then I'll just have her put the, the a clean link on the calendar so that everybody can get at it because everybody should go. And yeah, then again... Yeah. How much we get done today, um, which we should get, I mean, it's two slides. It's really not a big deal. Um, yeah, yeah. We'll work on it overnight. We'll just, you know, assign people to do stuff right now and we'll work on it overnight. And if anybody can meet at 9 a.m. to just go over what they want to say or what, what they want on that second slide, that would be great. So um, I know, Ruben, you started this. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit this page um, just to give you information. And again, you can start with a blank PowerPoint if you want to go to um, on our homepage. We had that presentation from Ben. Um, it was, you know, take that template. Um, if you go to the old learning materials working group, which I'll go to real quick because everybody might find this interesting um, in our templates. We did logos, presentations. You can always go to an old presentation. Why are none of these working? I guess they got rid of them. Maybe it's here. Oh, there you go. Uh, branding guidelines for marketers for Hyperledger. So here would be um, how, well, this is, I think I shouldn't have found this, but this is interesting. Um, the projects, we went over all of these. This is gone now. This went to deprecated because of a non-creds. So that's different, but this is all the branding. So you can take this presentation and just take this Hyperledger foundation and this blue line and make your own presentation. So um, again, I'm gonna drop this in the chat for anyone who's interested in making a presentation. If you guys wanna make a presentation just to present to our group, knock yourself out. Um, so that's very interesting. I'm glad I found that page. Let me put this in the chat. Again, so that's something that if you're interested in how to make a presentation or if you want to make that into the uh, templates for our group's library when we get it uh, up and running. Again, our library is going to be under this community. Oh, sorry, I hit create. I don't want to create. Under community. Come on, come on. 
under community. Uh, we're going to take over this library section. So we're going to have the personas. We're going to have the two clicks to their user guides. That's going to be something that we're going to be working on um, just to keep that in mind. So the presentation that we have to work on uh, for Wednesday um, is just two slides. Uh, Arunaman is going to do this slide. Actually, she's probably going to create both slides. But if you have anything assistance to offer specifically to the mentor programs, and again, we never, I'm going to try to do that because we never really saw what, how can I do it this way? Oh, it's not going to get us anywhere. That's it. The Roja does have a project in there, but they just didn't put documentation down as their. Uh, I'm not sure I'm in the right page. I'm definitely not in the right page. Oh, that's just where I was. Okay, I just visited the same page. Hold on. I'm sorry. Um, this is taking so long. Be a little bit more specific. Come on, you can do it. I have an Excel worksheet with them on. Oh, here we go. That's what I was looking for. So here are the projects. The only ones that I pulled out were the ones that had documentation on them. But there's all of these other projects so that if you're interested, like in Aroha, you can go to um, at the mentorship meeting and say, hey, I'm, in, I'm on the documentation task force and I'm just offering my services to the Aroha people because I'm getting to know your program and any documentation needs you have, please reach out to me. If you want to do that, that's great. Um, Cactus is in here. There's, there's all kinds of things that don't necessarily, again, um, ask for documentation, but um, might benefit if they know it's available to them. The only other is one Besu project I really want to look at. Did it get accepted? I don't see it. But yeah, there it is. This learning tokens, I don't know how we can incorporate this into what we're doing, but it seems like an easy fit. So if anybody wants to work on that one, that would be great because I don't know how they're tokenizing learning, but as the former learning materials working group and the, as we're all going to be the head of the library, we're all going to be the librarians. We might want to know with those learning tokens, um, how that software or how that system works. So in other words, if you learn something, you get a token, which you can use to more learning that, that gamifying learning sounds fascinating to me and I know nothing about it. So again, these are the mentorship programs. If you find yourself in the documentation task force, and want to help out specifically with one of these projects, please put your name down here and meet us tomorrow at nine o'clock with what you want to say, because Arunaman will bring a uh, two slide presentation and then we'll show you where you'll fit in and then we'll practice it and send it over to Min. Um, yeah, sure. Okay, so does anybody have, okay, so where, um, Aruna, where would you want people who are interested in this um, to leave information? Do you want to use this mentorship tab or do you want to use your I think, page? Uh, I think uh, on the mentorship tab itself, we can make a table and uh, everyone can uh, edit it and add the names uh, if they want to like make a presentation. Got it. I'm putting it in yeah. now. You can just make a table there and everyone can put their names and uh, what they want to say right there. <clears throat> oh, sorry. There we go. Oh, I spelled that one wrong.
though I'm not presenting um, for this, you guys are. So Arunaman would put her name. She's going to be interested in the overall um, presentation um, and she is presenting. So that would be a yes. So if you are interested, put your name here. I'm interested in Firefly. I would just like to put my contact information on the slide. I don't want to say anything. Or yes, I want to say, hi, my name is whatever, and I want to help with Firefly or Besu or the project I saw, whatever. So put your name, put what project you're interested in. And if you're willing to speak at Wednesday's uh, presentation. Is that what you wanted to remember? Is that like cover it? Yeah, yeah, that 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 works. That we, we can have all the information right at one place. Yep. And then um, when you start working on the presentation, you can also drop that in here. Um, yeah, I will just drop the presentation link uh, link in the present box and that way everyone can see it. Yep, perfect. Yeah. Um, so again, one slide is for you. The other slide is for everyone else to introduce themselves and attach to a project. Daniel, you have a question? Yes, I have a, have a question. Also, I see Daniel, sorry. Yes, I ju I'm just concerned. Um, there's, let's talk about the uh, Carbon uh, Accounting Group. I believe all of those things you mentioned earlier also applies to this to this the Capon Accounting Group, please come. Absolutely. Find. Did they have a mentor project? Sorry, I didn't get that. I'm, I'm, I don't know if they actually specifically put in for a mentor a project that you could help with the documentation. Let's go see. Uh, I'm not this. sure about that. I'm not sure. I can't. I don't think I asked that. I don't know precisely. Well, let's go check. I just was okay. there. I should be able to find the page. Oh, that's it. Went too far. And if not, if they didn't get a mentee this year, they definitely need documentation anyway. You might just have to offer, and we can do a presentation specifically for the climate accounting group if we if that's what we uh, I would I would be into that talking to them and saying, can we come and, and sit in your group and give a presentation about how we're gonna help? So let's see, Aroha, Aroha. They clearly I was at the meeting the last time. They clearly showed interest in what we have to offer as regards the documentation. And that is why I was asking because I indicated I'll be joining their meetings going forward to represent documentation group. So I don't know if. No, I they don't have a mentee. Okay. So what does that mean? Does that mean? Um, able to so for the presentation on Wednesday, it's the welcome to the mentee program. So there would be no need for you to make a, a statement on Wednesday. Um, I will reach out to the people at, at the carbon accounting um, and maybe in July set up some time where you can, we can do a presentation to them about how we're offering to help them. And in that way, you get more time to sit in on their calls and figure out what their needs are to bring back to our group so that we can get that done for you. Okay, great. Thank you. Noted. But yeah, you're right there. I'm surprised that they don't have a project in here. Um, it's surprising to me because they always have so many needs um, from the community, but interesting. Um, so thank you for that, though. Um, so you won't be doing anything for Wednesday, but we will definitely put that on um, an Arunaman, if you can make a note so that I don't forget, um, to reach out to the carbon accounting people and offer direct assist assistance in their documentation and presentation needs. Okay, so reach out to the uh, to which committee? Carbon counting, uh, carbon, carbon accounting. Okay, sure. Should I remind it on the 14th, uh, the day we will have the meet, right? Um, no, that's not going to be on the 14th. That'll be just something for us for after the next week down the road. Sure. Yeah, sure. I will, I will, I will note that down and remind you then. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? Uh, yes. Um, I, I try to, to summarize the, uh, for this week, we, uh, before, Wednesday, we should prepare a two-slide presentation, right? 
And well, no, Arunaman's going to prepare the first slide, um, and we're going to work together tomorrow morning on the second slide. If you are interested in being um, represented, okay, okay. So, and also fill the 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 row on that table. If you want to be part of, so um, if you are interested in. Um, offering your contact information to the people who are the mentees this year. We're giving them a presentation, a two slides during their welcome presentation. Um, mm -hmm. The first slide of Runeman is gonna introduce what the documentation task force is. And the second slide is specifically, if you want to say, I wanna help with, I'm just gonna use Besu again, Besu's documentation needs and that token, that learning token, uh, here's my email or reach out to me. I'll be on your call. I'm coming to your chat just to introduce yourself to whatever mentee program you want to assist with. Is that clear? Yeah, yeah. Now, now it's clear. And also uh, we, we will try to join to um, meeting, public meeting, uh, and uh, ask uh, if, uh, if a, a group uh, need a documentation um, helps. That would be wonderful. Yes, correct. Okay. Any call you can Perfect. go to. Perfect. Anyone that interests you and then just make a note of what call you went on. And then, you know, that that's definitely where you would be if you find, you know, again, I, I encourage you to go to more than one and figure out which one of the communities uh, is yours. That's what happened to me. I went to a lot of different calls when I first got in the community. Learning materials call was for me, um, obviously, because I'm a teacher, but I fell into the special interest group and the carbon accounting group just because I found them fascinating. Um, so there's not a limit on how many you can join, just mm -hmm. what your bandwidth is. Okay, and uh, in each team we, we can join and ask uh, if uh, we, we can we can say that we um, we are on task force documentation standard uh, membership yep. program. Okay, and ask uh, if they need uh, helps for the one for documentation. Okay, okay, perfect. yes. No, it's clear. And Thank then we you. come back and we're going to, again, the help we offer comes in five buckets, as I call it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and the buckets are the same ones we've talked about. Come on, come on, scroll. Right here, the GitHub, okay. the templates, the best practices, the onboarding, and then the user guides to... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, and I know somebody was working um, with, I think it was uh, Prete or somebody was working with Tracy on getting that GitHub repository up and running so that right away when the mentees need to set up a GitHub, um, it's there. So that's great. Um, okay. Hopefully he'll be on the next call. But for, again, anyone interested in the presentation to the mentorship program on Wednesday, meet us same time tomorrow, nine o'clock with your suggestions um, and Arunaman will show us the sample present two slide presentation and we'll edit it then for our uh, individuals who want to get some FaceTime presenting. Yeah, sure, okay. Bobby. Uh, so 9 a.m. which time zone are you talking about? Can you please clarify? It'll be exactly the same time as this call was. Oh, okay. Same okay. link just tomorrow. So oh, go on okay. the calendar, public meetings, grab the link for our next, whatever meeting link we have for next week and open it up because nobody's using it at that time, okay. I check. Okay, I got so it. Same, same time tomorrow and it should be just 10 minutes. It should just be, this is the presentation, who wants to say something? And then we you know, go through it and send it to Min. And then we show up at the presentation and then our two slides will be in her slide program. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay. Any more questions? Anybody have anything to say? Okay, have a great week. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate everybody's hard work. Thank, Thank you, Bobby. You too, you too, Bobby. Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Have a great day.